Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a viewer submitted question today. Ms. Torin Perkins says, all right, this might be maybe a dumb question, but like if I buy one of these things and uh, I don't have it yet, when do my payments actually start? And Torin, I'll tell you, I don't think that's a dumb question at all. I think that's a very good question that a lot of people, especially right now, since there are more retail orders out there, like personal build requests from customers than ever before, I think that this is a very good thing to, to talk about. And the answer could vary a little bit, but most of the time, the answer to this is 30 days after you sign a bank contract. Now, obviously, this is only applying to finance customers. People who just write a check for it and cash out, well, you know, you're all set. But uh, typically here, the answer is 30 days after the contract signing date is when your first payment will be due. Um, there will be a couple lenders who sometimes will ask you when you would like your payment date, which is kind of cool, so you can sort of plan your bills accordingly. Um, I always have everything land right at the end of the month for some reason. It seems like the 25th to the, uh, the 30th of the month, that's when I'm going broke, and then I'm just like a squirrel saving up my nuts for the rest of the month uh, before the end of the month happens again. But um, for the most part, it's going to be 30 days after signing. Uh, a little bit of extra information for you though regarding uh, like financing an RV that maybe hasn't been built or hasn't arrived yet. For instance, when can you actually sign uh, your lending contract and, and truly be locked into a purchase? And the answer there is not until a VIN number is assigned for the RV. Like. Uh, let's say you place a fresh order with us here at, uh, at Halid RV today, or wherever, your, your place of choosing. I know that we don't sell everything. I put this information out there as a courtesy to all the people that uh, support us online here. Um, uh, you, you place that order today, there's no VIN number. We can't send anything to a bank to be finalized. They, have, they, they finance basically and lock into a specific VIN. Um, they don't just finance you for this many dollars. Now, if you go to your own credit union, maybe it's a little different, but usually they want to know the collateral that's in hand and they want to know a VIN number that goes associated with it uh, in case they got to come get that thing, which thankfully is very rare. Um, the uh, So the order gets submitted to the manufacturer and right now it could be three months, it could be six months, and uh, it might be longer in some cases before that RV goes into production. When the RV is scheduled for production, which usually means about a month before that RV is physically assembled, that is when uh, you have a VIN number assigned. At that point, the dealer is notified, hey, uh, we've just uh, scheduled these units for you. Here's the VIN numbers associated with each of these units. Your dealership can communicate that with you uh, or with the lender or whatever. And at that point, you can have the bank contract finalized, which, in a way, it kind of begs the question, why would you want to do that before the RV arrives? And there's a couple different ways of looking at this. Um, so for instance, uh, I think most dealerships, like people don't realize, we can't just request one of these to come in from the manufacturer and if you don't like it, oopsie, oh well, have it back. Like we buy that. The dealership owns that RV when it lands. We have to buy that and then basically you're buying it from us. So for a little bit of time there, uh, we're carrying it on the arm, you know, effectively. Um, the, uh, with the idea being that obviously we have a commitment with you and that's going to wash itself out. Um, when to submit an order, most dealerships are going to want to know that you have final payment available as a result. So typically, uh, most dealerships are going to ask you to actually have finance approval before they submit uh, an order request to a manufacturer. That may vary based on dealership. I'll tell you that's how we operate here. I don't think it's an unreasonable policy, but I think, again, it's always good to have those expectations. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, the paint package out. Oh my gosh, that is good looking. That's the cobalt paint package available on the Montana Legacies, by the way. Obviously, just caught and had a squirrel moment there. When you send that in, though, and you get that finance approval, we place that order. Financing approvals have a finite window. You can't just come back two and a half years later and be like, oh, yeah, I finally decided I'm going to go ahead and take that trailer home. Usually, those things have about a three month window. And again, it can vary by lender a little bit. So, uh, after that period expires, you have to submit that lending all over again to get reapproved. Now, typically, that's not a problem. Most lenders will relook at things and go, yep, that's cool. But I don't know if you're aware of this. Bank rates can change multiple times, not within a month or two, in a day or two. You will sometimes see things like I was refinancing my home. Um, when I called that morning, uh, uh, the, my, my bank told me, 
yep, our rate right now is like 2.6% uh, on your 15 year note. I'm like, that sounds fantastic. I'm at like 4.2 right now. Well, by the time that I got my app submitted and everything, they said, man, Josh, I'm sorry to say this, but yeah, the rates are up to 3.2% right now. I said, well, you know, that's still better than what I had. And when I looked at an amortization schedule, still saving me money. And then before my lending was completed, rates went back down to like 2.6% or whatever it was. I'm just throwing fictitious numbers out there. But um, late rates can change literally daily. Now, we've been very fortunate in the RV industry that rates have been fairly consistent for a lot of years. For instance, uh, since really I've come into this business uh, since 2009, rates have been, uh, you know, the, like really good finance rates for RVs have been somewhere between say four to 7%, uh, you know, uh, interest rate on these things. And uh, it, it's interesting to me because not too long ago, uh, 12 to the low teens was like that was the ace rate that things had i don't think people realize the the advantageously low interest rates that are out there in the rv industry right now and how that may not always be that way um it, it'll be very interesting uh to see if that changes that is actually a little prediction i have for you on this video as this comes out check the posting date i am shocked we have not seen those rates climb a little bit i am predicting that through uh, the 22 and 23 calendar years, you will see interest rates creep up a little bit on RV loans and probably not just RV loans. If it's RV loans, it's gonna be home loans, every loan, every loan. Um, so that's just a little a side note for you, just for your own personal planning. Um, the uh, uh, thing here though, is that uh, you're not guaranteed necessarily to get reapproved. And typically you can only get one reapproval from a lender. So there's a, a bit of a timing aspect that goes into this. This is part of the inside of the RV industry and the financing thing that a lot of customers aren't always aware of. And I like to kind of peel the curtain back and shed a little extra light on these things. So here's the big question. Should you go ahead before your RV is made, before it's physically assembled, when you have the opportunity for a VIN number, should you go ahead and get it signed up and get locked into that interest rate and, and get that peace of mind done? Or should you wait? And there's, some very valid points to not uh, counting your chickens before they hatch and waiting for that RV to show up. Well, I tell you, historically, when we were not in a market situation of constant shortages and substitutions, it felt more advantageous for a client to get that interest rate locked in and just be done with it. Now, all you have to do is just show up and, and we show you around your RV and you take it home. Easy peasy, right? Well, right now, that's actually a policy that we've withheld. And understand, that means that we now have customers who are still technically kind of floating out there in the wild, who aren't really locked in, uh, who, who could say, eh, I'm sorry, I'm just not doing this. Now we could be jerks and we could say, yeah, well, we got your money down, you ain't getting that back. We've never done that. We, I suppose, technically would have the right to do that, but that's just not what we've ever done because, sure, yeah, maybe we win this little down payment thing, but you lose the war. It just ain't worth it. You know, it's just not, it's just not worth it. What we've seen happen a couple times this year though, is that someone has custom ordered an RV and it shows up and because of shortages or substitutions, it does not meet the expectations that we had, that we set and that you set for your, uh, for your purchase. And as a result, we've had probably close to 10 different times uh, this summer, my voice goes up an octave sometimes, where um, we have looked at the customer and said, okay, your RV came in, this is not what you expected it was, here's pictures, here's video of it. That's part of the reason you've seen us record so many custom uh, ordered RVs this year so that the owner could see exactly what it looks like before they say, yeah, okay, I'm definitely gonna do this. And about 10 different times, just shy maybe, but um, we have, uh, the person said, I'm sorry, uh, you know, uh, I, I understand it's not your fault, but I don't wanna do this. And we have just backed everything up. We've refunded their down payment money because it, uh, the, the, to no fault of our own, to no fault of their own, the RV didn't match what they wanted. They, they weren't buying the thing that they thought they were buying. Um, you know, it's just one of these weird things. So it's not necessarily a bad idea to wait to sign everything until you've had the opportunity to verify it's exactly what you want. Another thought, there's been uh, a, a lot of people concerned about 
Uh, is my RV coming in? Is it going to be built, assembled well? Has it been quality controlled properly? Things like that. If that contract is already signed, you may have made your first payment before that RV physically even arrives at a dealership. Like it or not, at that point, you own it. There, There is no backing that thing out, typically. And that's... Uh, I, remember, I'm, I'm not trying to like say, yeah, you're stuck with it. I'm trying to give you the idea here that there's uh, a level of peace of mind there and a level of uh, responsibility that you've already assumed. Kind of rolling the dice, assuming this is all going to work out. You may prefer to uh, physically inspect the RV and everything before you sign everything and make it stone cold official. Because at that point, it's not even you and the dealer. It's, it's you and the bank. You've signed a contract. You're, you're in it to win it at that point. It's the difference. <laughs> it's the difference on the uh, breakfast table between the chicken and the pig. The chicken has an interest on that plate, <laughs> but the pig's committed. <laughs> but one more little thought here for you, because there's no right or wrong answer to how to do this. You need to do it the way that feels comfortable and confidence inspiring to you. And if it doesn't feel right, you probably need to acknowledge your instincts here and be like, I, I don't know, I'm not getting the right feeling about this. Typically, your instincts are going to steer you right. But another thing to consider here is if we have a trade-in, maybe that uh, could change the situation for you a little bit. Here's what I mean. Uh, let's say, like, you're approaching the end of the season. Now, I know that our southern, our western clients, they get to camp a lot more than we do in the Midwest, but uh, there, there is definitely a, a cyclical season to RVing. Let's say you're approaching the end of the season. If uh, a dealer could get your uh, new RV ordered, vinned, get the contract signed, and accept your trade before the end of the season and have an opportunity to sell it, your trade may be worth more to them. It may be a financial benefit for you to get that contract done to offload your old RV before the new one comes in. Acknowledging that we've already talked about a couple uh, things to consider there, so keep that in mind. But you, you might be going, what do you mean? Why my trade should be worth what it's worth, right? The uh, the guidebooks, the, the trade value books, they update uh, at least every quarter, if not more. And when you're looking at about a six month lead time and you're going to flip over the calendar, when your new trailer comes in, your trade that you had is going to be worth less in that market. Um, because suddenly someone says, yeah, that's an 18, I'm buying a, a 22 or 23. Like, the, uh, the, the equation shifts, I guess is just the, the simplest way I can say it. So a dealer may say, and I don't think this is necessarily unreasonable, I guess that's for you to decide, and it's for you cho to choose whether or not you take your business there or not. Again, I'm just giving you the information. They might say, okay, well, your trade is worth X dollars today, but we also have to predict market fluctuations coming into the future and understand that your RV is now older or one model year older or one calendar year older by the time your new trailer comes in. So if you choose to wait until the new RV arrives, we may not be able to offer the exact same trade value. Uh, maybe they can, maybe they can't, I don't know. But that is, I think, a reasonable logistical thing to kind of consider and if you disagree with that then maybe that's not the right place for you to take your business again I'm not saying it's the right or wrong practice I, I am simply saying I acknowledge the logic and the validity to it and things here's the thing it's got to work for both you the customer and the dealer if it doesn't work for everybody then it works for nobody and then no one makes a sale no one gets a new camper everybody loses there's always going to be another place you can go and shop but you'll still have all those same considerations, all those same factors to kind of work into the equation, you know? So once again, Torin, thank you for the, uh, the, uh, the, the question that kind of spurred this whole conversation off and to everybody else. I hope you appreciate the extra level of information and insight that you've, uh, we, we've provided in this video. I've looked around, I haven't seen anyone else talk about things like when payments start, terms, factors to consider. Those are all the extra bits of information that we like to give you at Haylet RV. We're family owned and operated, and uh, we, we find it, everything is easier, everything is better for everybody when we have all the expectations set up front so that you have an idea of what you're getting into before you even pick up the phone, you know? And again, I don't care if you're from across the country. Like, I appreciate all of our long distance viewers. Like, uh, what's her name on YouTube? Crazy Critter Lady out of California. Appreciate seeing you in the comment section every single day, by the way. Really, really appreciate all of our viewers. And if you like the extra information that we give you here, hit that subscribe button, like our video, drop us a comment at least that says, hey, thanks, or 
please share this thing through like your social media groups. Uh, if you're in like a uh, an RV group, I don't care if it's a brand we carry or a brand we don't. This information in this video applies pretty much to like any dealership, any bank, any brand of camper. This is just good generic information I think everybody really needs to know. And I kind of feel like I failed that I haven't gotten it out there sooner, but keep trying every day to put more information out there to help everybody the best that we're able. So when you're ready, we're ready. And short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and keep those questions coming, everyone. Oh,